Hello, and welcome back to Fallout 4. I am Silas, and this is episode 14. Uh, in this episode, we're going to try to finish up the um, Reunions questline and get started up in Far Harbor, at least enough where we can start buying stuff up there and start exploring. Uh, as you probably noticed, Kira here has had a makeover. Different hair, a couple more scars, and most importantly, new armor and weapons and gear and shit. Uh, <laughs> she had a bit of a, a mishap. Ended up losing her leg there. Thankfully, cybernetics. So, without further ado, let's get going. Yep. <laughs> Come on, Nikki. I'm just asking for your opinion. It'd be a great quote. She's my client, Piper. Why don't you learn not to snoop on a woman's private affairs? Well, well, speak of the devil. You're back. And not with your son. What happened? Oh, let's see. I, uh... I didn't make it in time. Kellogg was working with the Institute, and he... He gave them Sean. The Institute? Oh, boy. I'm sorry, friend. Truly. That makes things considerably more complicated. He ain't kidding. Heck, Nick's a synth, and even he doesn't know how to get in. No synth does. Security protocols strip those memories out. I need to find a way. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night, and sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there, but to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is, or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg. Huh. <laughs> Man like that would have had access. In and out. Yeah, but I'm guessing he wasn't the surrender and talk type, was he? We can talk to him. Feel like holding a seance? <laughs> a literal dead end, huh? So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Blown up, huh. really, but, yeah. <laughs> Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. He wasn't going to talk, even if I had a way of bringing him alive. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. I don't know, Nick. That seems a little out there. You're talking to a synth. I am a little out there. Just stay <laughs> with me on this. Let's see, I guess we're gonna need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Omari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads. Nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. <laughs> I'm gonna need a really sharp ice cream scoop. I'm sure you'll manage. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth. So, who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm going to introduce you to Omari. But if you want to head there together, just say so. I'll head there, I'll head there on my own. All right. See you at the den. Don't worry. We're going to get your boy back. Just a few more steps. Uh, well, you two are out. I'm going to do some more research. I'll be at the public if you need me. Hmm. Ooh, case files. Marty Bullfinch case file. Cool. 
Hey, Rocco. Right. So huh, much knowledge was lost in the bomb. Case. Earl Sterling's disappearance, Clyde Vatim Bobrov. Now disappearing act to unravel Earl Sterling. 25 year old bartender at the dugout inn. One of the owners, Vatim Bobrov, noticed that Earl hadn't been into work for a few days. Security was called in. No investigation, of course. The Institute took him is the unofficial word about town, like always. Vadim came into my office, half drunk with a sob story about how he and Earl went way back, and that he just can't believe that Earl would get snatched up by the boogeymen. My gut says he's right. Um, good to see someone trying to bring it back. Yeah, I guess there was some uh, extra stuff, but <laughs> I done fucked up. Ooh, mysterious stranger. We'll take that. Miss Perkins. I'm glad you're here. We got a new case while you and Nick were out. Ready to put on the detective hat? The only thing I'm ready for is danger and awesome. I'm afraid hard-earned caps is all we've got to offer, honey. Anyway, the client is a fisherman who lives on the edge of the Commonwealth, Kenji Nakano. Mr. Nakano didn't leave many details, said he'd go over everything when you meet him. But if you want my guess, missing person case. Guy had a worried look a mile long. Hmm. So is the fedora and trench coat mandatory when solving these cases? Because I'm thinking smoking pipe and British accent. Hey, whatever floats your boat, Gumshoe. The Nakano residence is up in the northeast, near the coast. A small fishing house. He said that he and his wife will be waiting for you. Hmm. You know, on second thought, I think we're going to blitz through uh, this part of the uh, the main quest. And uh, I'll, go up, I'll go up to the Nakano residence after... Uh, Ooh, initiation. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I got some uh, some quest mods installed on here, so we'll do a couple episodes with those as well. But I think I'm going to go hit up the Nakano residence uh, in another episode because I really want to take uh, I really want to get Curie all fixed up and uh, and have her go with me to the um, uh, up to the island. Uh, one because well, you know. I Little spoilers. <laughs> uh, there's synths up there, like a community of synths, and uh, you get Curie's um, uh, uh, friendship rating, um, whatever you know, the how much she likes you, uh, up high enough. And after this quest, you can go to Doctor Amari and be like, "Yeah, can you transfer her into a synth body?" And yeah, also because she is an absolute sweetheart. She's the best character in here. Granted, her stats kind of suck, but, you know, what you gotta do? Okie dokie. Onward. Hmm. Oh, right, that reminds me. Um, oh, where the hell is it? So I got my I got my laptop open uh, right next to me, so I'm going to be doing a, a, a momentary thing while this is loading. So, ah, yes. So, um, not too long ago, I kickstarted a game called Sundered. Uh, it's from what it looks like, it's kind of... Uh, crap, I forget how they describe it, but it's kind of like... Uh, it's by the people who, I think, did Titan Souls and uh, Jotun. Um, but it has kind of a nice Lovecraftian feel feel with a uh, kind of a Metroidvania vibe to it. And currently I'm in... I have access to the beta because I kickstarted it. So I was thinking about doing a... Um, uh, a, a let's play of that, uh, just you know, blind running run through because you know, I've played this game a good couple of times already. Um, so well, we'll we'll see. Mr. Valentine. <laughs> I thought that was Deacon for a second. It's like Deacon, what the fuck are you doing here? May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs. You big flirt. Well. Come along, Nick. Mr. Valentine. I do like this effect here where like you can just see the, the light there is just bam, you know, glaring. Huh, Dr. if we don't have a shadow. Yes. Wait, I know you. You're on the railroad. What's this all about? Oh, there we go. <laughs> cool. Oh hey, Amari. Um we need your help, Doctor. I need the memories from a man named Kellogg. But he's dead. 
I know it's asking for a miracle, Omari, but you've pulled off the impossible before. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse. <laughs> you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. <laughs> Technically, the corpse was defiled already. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Did you say that like Dr. Frankenstein? Igor, fetch me the brain! <laughs> Sorry. No, I will not. Now, do you have it? Mm. Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Oh, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Hmm. So, the brain is still good, right? Possibly. There's no sign of decay, so the tech is probably preserving the tissue, injecting some kind of compound to keep it stable. But there's no way to access the memories inside without a compatible port. You're talking about me, right? I'm an old synth. If the Institute built me out of similar parts, we might have an in. There could be long-term side effects. I don't know where to even begin with listing the risks. Don't bother. I don't need to hear them. Plug me in, Doc. We should try plugging you into a toaster next. Hmm. Fresh toast. Uh, it's nice to know that even when I'm about to have a foreign object shoved into my noggin, you find new horrible ways to laugh at my expense. Well, not really ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Rob Cold. Ooh, ooh, Grognak. Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Hmm. Tell me you have a way past this, Doctor. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Hmm. Nick and I are going to share a mind? <sighs> I'm not going to see him in any compromising positions, am I? If a smart mouth was all it took to solve problems, we would have found your son by now. <laughs> um, no. You won't have to worry about that. The only memories you'll access are the ones in the implant. <laughs> all right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Oh, Fallout 3 flashbacks. Hey, it's damn near the same thing, isn't it? Well, kind of. I mean, you know, the other thing was like a virtual reality hodgepodge 1950s bullshit Initiating thing. brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. Oh. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Ah! simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. Huh. Oh. Ah. There. 
This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Dad was either drunk or not around. This may I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. Hmm. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. And, uh, Mom nope. knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. People are always hoping for something better. I usually end up with something worse. Huh. Okay. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah. You've gotta give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. <laughs> Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I <laughs> hey! I got that in my backpack. I know. Nice. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. <coughs> That's okay. I got it. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. Oh. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Damn. Uh, I should feel bad about killing this guy after I see all this, but I don't. I'm not sure what that says about me. Come on, fuck it. Oh. Mind if we uh, sit down? Suit yourself. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. 
Oh, we'll pay you. And uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Narration. Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. <clears throat> B-748, initiate. Damn! Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. God damn it, Amari. We're running out of brain here. Ah. Ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Oh. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. Vault computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... Just... find it. Pod C6. Down the hall near the end. Right. Huh. Oh, damn, that's actually pretty cool there. No, uh, sorry. The thing this I'm, uh, the <laughs> thing I'm kind of impressed about is I remember seeing, um, or I remember playing uh, Fallout 4 a while back, and I got to this part, and I looked in on myself. I'm like, wait a sec, that's after I got all the all the cosmetic work done. But this, God, we don't need to see this. Yeah, that's almost. Yeah, that's her before. Uh, that's her before all the, uh, you know, <laughs> getting fucked up. I got him. Let the boy go. I'm only gonna tell you once. I'm not giving you son. God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving her alive. <laughs> I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft pre-war vault dweller. Even if she somehow got thought out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. <laughs> if she you can take me out, right. they won't be able to hide from her for long. What's the hold up? I'm, uh, almost finished, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact right. memory. Whenever you're ready. Ah, <sighs> almost done. Is oh, damn. That your son? This appears to be a very recent memory. So, good news, I think. <laughs> Fairly recent. Sure. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. 
I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. Kellogg. It's okay. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the coursers. They weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. <laughs> we'll I'm just see. glad they were always on my side. One of these days you're gonna get your head blown off just die. barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Wow. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or...? Just elimination. Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. X688, ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. I don't know about you, dear viewer, but all of this leads me to believe that things are as they appear in the memories. I don't know what kind of side effects the huh? procedure might have had. <laughs> done this before. How do you feel? <laughs> uh, I have this burning feeling inside my skull. It's like it's on fire. That's not surprising. All the synapses in your brain have just been pulled apart, connected to someone else, and then pulled back together. I injected you with a large stim pack while I was pulling you out. That should ease things. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? <laughs> There's more than one person who knows about the Institute. Virgil, that scientist who escaped. I didn't know Institute scientists could defect. This changes everything. He could answer all sorts of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That can't be right. No one would risk going there, not even to hide. Hmm. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. 
Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new, but the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. Hmm. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation in the glowing sea like a shield, or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. <laughs> oh, I'm going in naked. Fingers crossed I get superpowers. I know you're joking, but as a doctor, I feel obligated to remind you that unprotected radioactive exposure will only kill you. Dead. D-E-A-D. -E so be sure you find a way to get through there with your life intact. And good luck. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Hmm. Neat. Nick! Where are you, buddy? Ah, there you are. Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. You want to try for round two, huh? Let's go. What? What are you talking about? Wait, are you just playing a joke on me? I guess that's for you to wonder and for me and Kellogg's memories to know for sure. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Hmm. I'm gonna head out on my own from here, Nick. Good luck out there. You know where to find me. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, with this, I do believe we will end the episode here. Uh, I'm going to go fix up Curie, get some power armor, and, uh... You know what? Just for the hell of it, we I think next... We should head over to the Nakano residence when we can. Find out what their case is about. Yeah. You step through the gate, you got blocks. Yeah. But yeah. No, uh, next episode, um, we are going to have Curie all fixed up and looking adorable, because well, she's a sweetheart, like I said. Uh, we're going to go hang out with the Nakanos and then grab a boat up to the island. I got a uh, lever action and a harpoon gun I gotta get, if I'm going to be going down to the uh, glowing sea. I got just the power armor for there. So, until then, uh, I guess have a good day, y'all. Thank you for watching.